Hi there, everybody. We just had Thanksgiving, didn't we? And now it's already the first Sunday of Advent almost. And so we get to start talking about Christmas, which is so exciting and feels so fun. Now you might have noticed that the sign behind me is a little bit different. Let's take a look at it, okay? So this sign says hope. And maybe some of you remember that a couple of years ago, we had these great big signs and during our summer camps, we all colored them together. So keep watching every week and that sign will change every single week. Now, the other thing that I hope you got is a bag like this. A whole bunch of these were delivered to people's front doors over the last week. And if you didn't get one, send me an email and I'll make sure that you get one, okay? Because the stuff in here is what we're going to be doing all throughout Advent for the next four weeks. The other thing is inside your bag, there's a little booklet that looks like this. And this is going to be what we use for the next four weeks as well. So make sure that you know where this is. I think we should unpack what's in our bag. How about that? Let's take a look at what's inside. So first, you probably have a paper plate. Then you've got a whole bunch of strips of paper with words on them. We'll talk about that in just a minute. What else? There are five candles and all of your candles have different words on them. This is so that you as a family can create your very own Advent wreath at home. And that's because we won't all be together on Sunday mornings. So that way you can do your Advent wreath anytime during the week that you want. You could do it every night at dinner if you want, but you'll have it as a family to do together. So that's the beginnings of your Advent wreath, okay? Now other things in here you'll wanna save for other weeks. So let's take a look, okay? I know that next week, there's something really special and fun to do. There's cookie ingredients. So you'll have a chance to bake cookies together as a family. And you can decide if you want to save all the cookies or if you wanna take them to somebody. That's gonna be your choice. There's also an ornament in here for you to decorate. And, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna do something really special with this bird seed. So make sure that you don't lose it. Hang on to everything and just keep it in your bag, okay? And then there's stickers in here. I love my stickers. And even some Play-Doh. And we're gonna do a special activity with our Play-Doh in a couple of weeks too. But let's get back to our Advent wreath and our strips of paper, okay? So I'm going to put these things back. And our strips of paper, you can actually make this into a chain, a very special Christmas chain. And there's a link for every day until Christmas. And you can make it into a chain and then tear off a link. Or you can add a link every day. It's totally up to you, but you'll also find that you have blue dots here so that you can do that whichever way you want, either count up or count down. But another way that you could do it is what if I just don't want to make a chain? That's your choice too. So I have this pretty vase and I thought you could just put all of it in a pretty vase. And then once a day as a family, you just pull out what it says to do on that day and you do it. Simple as that. So I guess what I'm saying is all of this is up to you how you choose to do it. But right now, let's get some ideas for how we can make an awesome family advent wreath at home with just stuff you've got around the house, okay? So it's kind of a cold and rainy day right now. So I'm gonna put my coat on and I'm gonna grab my clippers 
and we're actually going to go outside and I'll show you some things that we could find outside that might be great to make your family advent wreath. Come on, let's go. Okay, so look at this huge tree I have. Lots of people put green evergreens on their advent wreath. So I just have my clippers and I'm going to cut some. If you decide to do this, make sure it's okay with your parents first, all right? And then come over here for just a second. Let me show you something else that I have. Underneath this tree, there's all these pine cones. See what I mean? Pine cones are another great thing to put with your advent wreath. Let's take this stuff inside and I'll show you some other ideas I have. Come on. Come on, Abby. Let's go. You know what? I'm going to stop right here. I remember that I have a whole bunch of candles. Your event kit has candles in them, but if you have some special candles at home that you really like, go ahead and grab those too. You can use any candles that you want. And now we're going to go downstairs to my craft room too. Come on, let's go. So in here, there's a whole bunch of Christmas bows. And Christmas bows will be another really fun way to make an advent wreath. So let's take all of this upstairs and let's get started, okay? that I found to make an advent wreath just with things that I have in my own house. So remember I collected some pine cones and if you wanted to get really fancy you could spray paint these. I didn't because I didn't want that big of a mess. But then look at this guy. So remember I found a candle that I thought was pretty in my house and so this has kind of a big price candle and then four smaller candles. And this is all the stuff that I found outside. Super fun, right? Then this, I just took a whole bunch of Christmas bows and I taped them around the outside of my um, plate. And then I put the candles and the votives that were in your bag on this plate. Now, another thing that I found, a couple more things, I found this little wreath and it was a dollar at the dollar store and it looks pretty cute if I just put it right around the plate and then I can put my candles again on the plate and it's another great wreath right so just have fun with it be creative with it and use whatever candles you want and just really enjoy the time together okay now give me one second. We're gonna go ahead and light our wreath for this week, okay? Except I forgot my lighter, it's over here. Just a second. So usually when we're together, we just light one candle and we say that it is a reminder that Christ is with us even in all of the dark places. But throughout Advent, 
we are going to be reminded that the light of Christ grows and grows as we get closer to Christmas. So this week, we're going to light one candle and we're going to light the candle that says hope. So here's our hope candle that we're gonna light. And we're gonna set that back on here. And then, just like we always do, let's grab the people that we're having Sunday school with. And if you're having Sunday school just by yourself, that's great too. Grab a stuffed animal, or even just give yourself a little squeeze. And let's just be reminded that it is such a special gift that we get to be together and have this special time together, okay? So now I'm gonna move some of this stuff and we are gonna talk about the lesson that's in our devotional, okay? So let's make a little bit of space here on my table. And I'm gonna keep this right here because we're gonna use that for something in a minute. And I'm gonna get out my devotional. Now the great thing about this is there's also tons of pages to color. So when you're just sitting around, you can go ahead and color your pages. But at the beginning of our devotional, the words here talk about in light and in darkness. And here's the thing, especially this time of year, we start to think that darkness is bad and that light is good. And what we need to remember is that way back in the book of Genesis, when the story of creation is happening, we know that God created the darkness and the light, and God said that both of them were good. So let's think about that a little bit, and let's think about the ways in which the darkness can be helpful and good. Now, one of the things that it talks about in our devotional is in our family activity, we have one of our candles lit, right? But I'm not sure how well we can see it. Let's do this. Let's shut off all the lights in my kitchen. And let's see what happens to the light from our one candle, shall we? Here go the lights. What do you notice? All of a sudden, that one light is just about all that we can see. Let's turn the lights back on. Okay, awesome. So what we learn about that darkness is that the light becomes even brighter when it's dark. So think about that a little bit with your family and think about how do you feel about the light and how do you feel about the darkness? Sometimes the light can be very exciting, but what's helpful about the darkness? Sometimes the darkness tells us that it's time to be still and quiet and maybe even rest. So think about those questions as a family. Now, I would like to share a very beautiful story with you about light and darkness, okay? This is the story of Soleil. It's written by Lupita Nyong'o and illustrated by Vashti Harrison. Soleil was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family. Not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn, Baba the color of dusk, and Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. Hardly anyone at school looked like Soleil either. People gave her sister Mitch pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. People gave Soleil names like Blackie and Darkie and Night. Solway felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sister made lots of friends. 
So I dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. So she got the biggest eraser she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama. So I decided to work from the inside out and she ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful, not just to pretend. I want to have daylight. I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in to wake her for school the next morning, so I rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. So I told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Soe, she remembered, she muttered. And what does it mean? Star, Soe whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for beauty, Mama said, rubbing Soe's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful. Soe sighed. Well, you are beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my love. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now, up you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said. Come with me. Solway hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day, and they were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely and nice and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, Knight got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then, Day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. So did everybody else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night, and she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night. But you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned, and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors and sunlight can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen 
elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little? Not even at all? Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows, and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and on their darkest night and every shade in between. Together, they make the world we know light and dark, strong and beautiful. So I rose the next morning beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong. And if she never, if she ever needed a reminder of her own brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. Solway felt beautiful inside and out. I love that story and I hope you liked it too. Let's close in prayer, shall we? And we're gonna use the prayers for the month of December that are actually listed in your devotional. Loving God, your spirit surrounds us in both light and darkness. Like sunlight, you help us find our way and explore our world. Like a dark night sky, you give us rest from all the worries of the day. May we be light for people who need to see hope in this world. May we, may we be cozy darkness for those who need a safe place to rest. Thank you for the season of Advent and for bringing us together. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.